The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more, do we go into the breach, dear friends. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Up 11 on the S&P cash. The Dow's up uh, 147. Uh, Nasdaq's up 20. Uh, when we check in uh, for volume, it's okay. It's not bad. Two billion shares as we start the show. And uh, it's getting a little weaker here, but it's not falling off the edge of a cliff. Just a little weaker as you would think it would be. So what? Uh, 27.58.69 is the last tick I see on the S&P cash. And what's that going to give us? Well, yeah, up uh, four tenths of a percent. This kind of market that's going to claw on out a little bit more. But uh, as I said yesterday, I'm not looking for a whole lot until we get into earnings and get through earnings. Uh, we've got some of the first stocks coming out with earnings today. We'll talk about them. And uh, what else is going on here? Well, that's kind of it. The uh, got a lot of people uh, trying to push a lot of different things. Uh, and eh, just kind of a, eh, I'm going to call it a wash. Uh, sideways to a little up. But uh, almost all these sectors that I look at, uh, save a couple, uh, are fairly high and have been at fairly high overbought levels for a little while. So could we get a pullback? We could. It's going to be a lot about what uh, the uh, C-suite, the executive suite, E-suite, E-suite, or the C-suite. I think they call it the C-suite for the CEO, CFO, all the C's. Uh, say about how the tax, new tax policy will uh, affect their business going forward. Most uh, will do fairly well. There's a handful of people that are going to have to take uh, one-time hits because they engineered their tax policy to the old way and not the new way. And, of course, uh, February 1st, what do we have? A lot of people getting more money in their checks that uh, with the tax deduction, uh, the average guy going to work uh, 40 hours a week is going to bring back a hundred bucks a month more than he did before with less deductions. So that $1,200 a year, what's it going to go to? Well, and, and can we look at a market that crests and falls right into uh, the Average Joe six pack having a hundred bucks more a month, using it to buy a little more expensive car. If you believe Basil's interpretation or thoughts on the matter, uh, if you think about mine is just maybe going out to eat a few more dinners uh, with the family, maybe once or twice a month, depending on how big your family is. But it's going to be a little bit more of an impotence. Uh, and, of course, uh, if you get $100 more a month, that means that maybe $15, $20 more goes into your 401K. Does that support the market a little bit? Uh, don't quite know yet, but uh, it would look like there's going to be some at least marginal or notional uh, more money coming into the market for 401Ks. So do you think as soon as people start getting uh, more money in their uh in their uh, checks, the market's going to crash? Or is that going to add to a little bit more of the euphoria going on in the markets? Um, I think it's going to add a little bit and maybe just put enough uh, of a, uh, a shovel full of sand under the keel of a boat that uh, is kind of right up to the water line right now. Uh, and uh, a little more water would swamp it, but guess what? They just uh, found a nice little shoal to rest that boat on for a little while longer. So uh, I'm thinking we could go through February, maybe even March, maybe all the way to May before we see any kind of significant downturn. Doesn't mean we're going higher. 
but does mean uh, that it uh, right now we're looking for signs of the markets really falling apart and don't see a lot of signals yet other than the fact these things are at high levels. Uh, but it, uh, it passed the last year when they were at high levels. They pulled back slightly and then went to even higher levels again. And uh, again, this is going to be a uh, stock pickers market, I suspect, because a lot of these companies uh, that have tax issues will be either very bullish or very bearish for these fo uh, folks. Doesn't seem a lot of people sitting in the middle ground. Uh, as always, we like to get uh, started with a little bit of history. There it's I'm sorry, this is just the best one I've had all year. Millennials walking around like they rent the place. I love that one. Uh, to, to, on this day in 1877, Hermoth Hollerith, Herman Hollerith, he hollereth, is issued a U.S. patent for his punch card calculator. Seven years later, he starts a company called the Tabulating Machine Company. In 1911, this is one of four companies that merged to form the company that one day will be called IBM. His invention of the punch card tabulating machine marks the beginning of the era of semi-automatic data processing systems, and his concept dominated the landscape for nearly a century. Eh, I was on to paper tape when I started using my first computer in 1976, 1977, punch tape. But uh, hey, where would you be without this guy and his hanging chads if it weren't for that? And of course, Einstein, uh, a huge uh, boost to this whole business uh, when he wrote about photons and the way that uh, light worked and uh, basically told engineers how to build uh, uh, devices that could look through and find these punch cards holes, not by mechanical contacts, but by actually looking for light in each of those punched out holes. And of course, uh, one of the reasons he won a, uh, a Nobel Prize, many of them actually. But uh, on this day in 1877, kind of the beginning of technology, really, right? I mean, there'd been Things like uh, mass-produced rifles wasn't quite there with the cars, but certainly in 1877, this probably sounded like some kind of miracle. Uh, but certainly big um, applications for tabulating, adding, and addition uh, were made with mechanical devices using these cards. And uh, nothing like it. Don't spin, spend, uh, spindle, or mutilate. I always wanted to mutilate and spindle a lot. Just uh, you don't get enough of that, but I'm still looking for one of those old stamps one day that I could stamp on things. Don't bend, spindle, or mutilate. That spindle thing, I always wondered how many people died by falling on their desk on one of those. But uh, you don't see many of those anymore, do you? The old spindle. Okay, what else is going on in the market today? Acuity Brands uh, getting a bit hammered today. And uh, what can you say about these folks? Quarterly sales dropped 1%. So again, you get yourself uh, set up and priced for perfection, uh, you're in problems. Uh, it's off almost uh, 25 bucks, 13 and a half percent, huge volume. We'll talk about more about this when we come back. <laughs> TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts 
charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And Johnny from Orlando has emailed me. You can too. Uh, that's path, P-A-T-H, at TFNN.com. Weighing in on Big Spindle and Big Paperweight, two companies put out of business by Central Air. Before then, in the sweltering days of summer, you had giant fans blowing papers everywhere. You either had to put them on a spindle so they didn't blow away or use a paperweight. And Central Air put those, those big corporate monoliths, big spindle, and big paperweight out of business. You never know uh, what's going to change when you, uh, when you bring some new technology on, but things do change. Uh, so what do we have out here? Oh, we're talking about Acuity Brands uh, out here today. And uh, oh, where is that out here? Come on. Yeah, nothing out here? Yeah, okay. Uh, management blames softness, and it's uh, in markets for the decline in revenue. It expects the market to improve. Uh, recently passed bill was pointed to as one of the reasons for bullishness. Uh, now, these guys make um, a lot of uh, lights and uh, business uh, office related. Uh, so they'd be kind of a a business material or a building materials kind of business. Uh, but when you see all those lights and exit signs and all the other stuff, the accoutrement. Oh, I love to say that word. I haven't said it in a long time. The accoutrement of your basic business. Uh, Acuity Brands is there. and uh, But again, uh, just a lot of these companies. Um, was it uh, IYI, isn't it? Uh, I think that's the name of it. Uh, yeah, A I Y I. Uh, I think a lot of these things just priced extremely well. 
And, you know, if they're not printing money, like this company isn't, uh, if you're a company that had kind of low margins on products that aren't that technical, if you're not a software company or a computer chip company making 50, 60, 70 percent margins, uh, if you're, you're squeaking by with 10, 12, 15 percent margins, uh, you're priced uh, and a lot of the stocks are like this on low margins. They are priced extremely well these days. Uh, a little pullback from something like Amazon, you think maybe they'll just make it up next quarter or next year. Uh, but these kind of companies that work on slimmer or smaller margins just can't, and they tend to get crushed and down uh, a good uh, 25 bucks on the day. One of the other ones out here uh, being... Uh, Pushed by our old uh, friend, uh, Mr. Kramer. Bring me the head of the false prophet, Jim Kramer. Hey, what do you know? Well, Jim Kramer is, uh, was pushing Elf of Beauty here just about an hour ago. Um, actually, the chart doesn't look as bad as you would think. Um, Kramer giving it the whip, though, so you have to worry. Uh, I'm assuming it's got cooties if he's given it his papal blessing. Uh, but actually, chart doesn't look too bad. The problem was today when this thing whomped down, you're back into the November 9th low that had 1.5 million shares with 2.7 million shares. And I don't know if anybody heard that, but it was a magical sound that happened here in the studio. That was the air conditioning just cutting off. Yes, the old air conditioning is turned back on, it automatically kicked on here about an hour ago down in sunny Florida. So if you're still buried in the snow, I feel for you. I feel your pain. And Terry says, I can't find a pay phone. That's true. I've seen one. And it's got a line of uh, people around it that I assume are drug dealers. But uh, that's just my uh, suspicion. Let me put it that way. Uh, okay. So what else do we have going on? Wanted to start looking at some other things. I got a lot of stocks at new 52-week uh, highs today. And, of course, with the market moving higher out there, um, kind of the usual suspects. Uh, but uh, we'll take a look at it here. Um, yeah, I'm thinking, oh, we got to do that, too. Uh, I'm going to be showing at least a taste of what we'll be doing in the webinar a week uh, from next week, uh, next from what? The seventeenth, isn't that a week from tomorrow? I'm got, I've got, uh, I'm still trying to get used to even 2018. Yeah, the seventeenth is Wednesday, a week from tomorrow, uh, all day long apparently. Uh, but we've got a lot of these stocks uh, coming out here, and I want to see what these things are doing for volume. So we're going to spend a little time on this at the bottom of the hour. I'll show you a fairly interesting chart, giving you my read on my sector oscillator for gold and see what you might want to see in that. Uh, anyway, uh, as I said, a lot of these stocks uh, hitting 52-week uh, highs, most of them seem to be on fairly light volume. We'll see how these things close. Agilent Technologies, uh, 3 million shares on November 28th at $70.93. Solidly through it. Looks like we're going to close higher, but uh, about half of volume so far. Some of the other ones that are kind of interesting, Amazon was higher in the morning, uh, and kind of rolled back over. But again, another 52-week high, volume kind of light out here. So if we're thinking that we get into earnings next week uh, with a big uh, start really happening for uh, Alcoa, I think next Tuesday, uh, you really want to be thinking about how these things are lining up and are they priced for perfection? Uh, do they go higher? Most of these things, I think, could go a little higher, and I think that's what's going to happen. Probably going to see 70% of them go a little higher. Problem is going to be how many of these things act like Amazon and other st stocks like Elf um, that uh, are getting slammed today. Um, what else do we have? Amazon, like I said, uh, fairly decent. You would have liked to have seen some more volume the last couple of days as this broke through the November 27th high, but uh, not so much. Uh, at Home, another one. 
a lot of these things are going now. Probably the more interesting thing to me is there's no real signal, no double tops or anything on these 52-week highs. There just isn't a lot of volume as these things break higher. Uh, Boeing, uh, certainly. Uh, Boeing or I ain't going. Uh, but uh, you know what? Just another pop up here at the highs as they can't uh, make planes fast enough for the rest of the world. To uh, uh, B A X. Let's see what else is out here. Caterpillar. Uh, very hard to figure out how this stock, you know, just keeps going higher. Uh, it's had uh, at least a couple of decent gap ups. Uh, so there are a lot of gaps on the way back down if these things do tend to fail. Uh, but um, what we don't have so far and we want to watch uh, into the end of the day out here is how some of these things do. Uh, Three million shares so far today. We had almost six million shares yesterday in Caterpillar. Not to saying that these things are going to roll over instantly and die, but I do think maybe we're at the point in many of these that they could find themselves in a gentle pullback or even go sideways for a while. Uh, but, uh, man, we're getting in some fairly verified error in that. When we come back, uh, I'll show you something I've been working on for the last three months, um, a, the fruit of my machine learning work. We'll be back. If you haven't tried David White's daily trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, then this month is your perfect opportunity. On January 17th at 5 p.m., Dave will be hosting a special subscriber webinar where he'll be presenting on the newest feature in his newsletter, short-term sector charts that work on both the madness and wisdom of crowds. Join Dave on January 17th as he describes the method he uses to recognize these signals on a sector-by-sector -sector basis and as he discusses how he used this new tool to buy the gold miners in their seemingly darkest hour in December. And all new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. If you're a trader scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity, then now is a great time to sign up for the Path of Least Resistance. For all the information and for details on Dave's subscriber event taking place January 17th, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Well, it's said that the uh, market uh, and other things uh, is uh, bipolar. It either thinks things are good getting better or bad getting worse, and there's not a lot of in-between. Um, one of the things I worked on in the uh, starting in the fall was trying to take what are called weak learners in machine learning. That's something that has uh, some efficacy, i.e. it's better than random noise, and try to find ways to actually uh, make these things strong learners uh, or strong indicators in uh, technical analysis, stock market uh, talk, uh, into stronger, uh, stronger uh, signals. And one of the things that I found out was that um, if you take and you start kind of with a nine-day moving average and start applying it to sectors, uh, putting them all together and then using some magic dust uh, in the uh, computer, you can make a pretty good indication when everybody's at the top and every, and, or everybody's at the bottom and give you fairly decent uh, good uh, uh, buy and sell um, signals. And one of the things that we did uh, in the newsletter was go along uh, gold and silver miners you know, back around the 10th or the 12th of December. I think it was the 10th, a couple of days early, uh, because we saw just uh, a lot of support, uh, some other uh, good things. Not use this uh, only by itself, uh, but it is fairly decent um, signals, especially at bottoms. Uh, if you're most mostly on the long side, uh, people just can't stand it. Uh, after a couple of days, when every stock is below a ballistic uh, curve, uh, these things tend to rally fairly strongly or at least go sideways. So if you have uh, indications that you wanted to do something like buy gold miners, uh, they're starting to look better and you look at the uh, charts, but you're trying to figure out when to buy. Generally, uh, and we'll go through a lot of history uh, in this webinar, you're going to find out that when these things are uh, at extreme lows, there isn't a lot of blowouts to the bottom or surprises. Uh, sometimes these things go sideways for a while, but generally you're going to see exactly what we saw in the gold miners, and that is after everybody in the world is selling uh, their shares of gold miners or silver miners or whatever, if you've got enough of them, you can really find and kind of fine tune uh, when the big moves are going to come. Uh, there's a little bit more to this, and that's why we're going to have a webinar. But uh, what I'm kind of showing to you here is also some divergence in the last few days when we look at the GDX. That is, this thing's pulled back. It really hadn't pulled back that far. Pulled back a little bit more today, of course. What is it uh, at here to, 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 to GDX? So it's down 49 cents, down 1.5%. So we're down at uh, 2350. What is that? Uh, GDX uh, 23, yeah. Uh, 2331, 2321. So we're down kind of in that, but that's about where support comes in. My guess is that we're going to see all the stocks uh, under that ballistic curve uh, tonight. And generally, that means you're about one or two days away from the next move higher. Now, at this point, you want to start looking at your tools and saying, okay, I've got my tools here. Uh, they predict not much of a bounce, a fairly decent bounce, or a huge bounce. But generally, when you get the kind of divergence where everything goes above a ballistic curve, uh, let's say like nine-day moving averages, and then below them, like we're now seeing all the gold miners do, but there's not much damage to the price. That generally tells you that you've had a very nice, uh, very uh, big, uh, small pullback, but everything is basically caught up. You're done kind of consolidating, and I'm looking for the same kind of thing, which is you've had this little pullback. We've gone sideways for a few days. We're going to have this one day out here, and then we're going to start moving up probably Thursday, Friday. So keep a close eye on it if you've been looking to wait and buy gold Miners on the pullback, um, you've got to do that. Um, uh, we'll talk to, yeah, I'll answer that question after the uh, show today. Uh, what else do we have? Um, anyway, uh, that's one on the gold miners. Uh, I actually have 21 different sectors right now uh, from just a little bit about everything. 
Um, but uh, if you've got uh, anything that you specifically want to look at, you can always give me a call at 877-927-6648 or email me at path at tfnn.com. Um, of the ones that I do have already, and I can add more, but there's rules to adding more, and uh, we'll get into that in the webinar of what works and what doesn't. I've done some pretty extensive uh, testing, but from the NASDAQ 100, the IWM, in fact, all uh, uh, almost 2,000 stocks in that one, uh, the Dow 30, the semiconductors, the SMH, biotechs, retail sector, Dow transports, financials, technology, energy sector, crude sector, uh, home construction, U.S. health care, uh, security ETF materials, uh, building materials, uh, junior gold miners, and the big and non-junior gold uh, miners, uh, REITs in general, Internet uh, Index, uh, the FANG stocks, and broker dealers is what I have now. So it gives us a pretty good uh, look. Eventually, I'll be working on putting all those together uh, in a model. Uh, hopefully to better understand the movement of the S&P and the NASDAQ 100. So we'll be back that. Uh, uh, okay, what uh, what do we have? Oh, um, so that gets that. But like I said, uh, you can always give me a ring at 877-927-6648. Uh, but uh, extremely good on buying uh, and uh, kind of, I think maybe this whole year could be, say, in the last year that we've uh, seen some kind of uh, uh, mania. Uh, so they kind of hold up a lot longer at the highs, but that's uh, markets like that in general, right? Uh, fear is easy to buy because it normally comes and goes. Uh, greed, a little tougher to buy because they can hang out at highs a lot longer. We're going to get back to stocks in the 50, uh, uh, in the uh, one year, 52 uh, week high, uh, and see some other ones out here. COP, another 52 week high out here. No sign that these things are coming off, other than again, light volume, but this one's not the biggest offender. 4.5 million shares yesterday to 3.3 today. So, you know, by the end of the day, can some of these things come back in? I think they can. Now, some of these other ones are giving some kind of interesting signals. Uh, Salesforce did get a 52-week high today, did so with a doji. You're going into 10 million shares from the November 21st high, 109.19, and uh, we've got about 2.2 million shares so far. So only about a fifth of the volume. Uh, certainly, the energy off this uh, December 5th low also didn't have a great deal of energy. So there are some, you know, it, you can start to see the wheat from the chaff out here. This one did have a fairly decent pullback. But again, uh, the question is, uh, this one hadn't been around as long as the others. It doesn't have the cash sitting overseas like the $260 billion that Apple has or the $150 billion that Microsoft has or all the other billions that are around. So maybe this one, maybe it's gonna be a little weaker because it doesn't have that tsunami of cash headed for shorts. We'll be back in a minute. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! 
Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30 day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at tfnn.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan. Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And, uh, hey, nice thing, I probably didn't bring it up in our discussion of the uh, sector charts. Uh, it's not just uh, taking an ETF and running a, a signal on it. It's actually taking every stock in that ETF and running signals on each one of them individually and then putting it back together uh, uh, and uh, taking a look at the global answer uh, between all of them. What do they actually say uh, together? And, of course, uh, if you've been in statistics classes, generally one of the first things they do in the first year is to statistics is uh, send you out and show you the wisdom of a crowds. Uh, they'll give you a big gallon jar full of uh, either marbles or peanuts or something and ask everybody to come by and say, okay, how many peanuts are in there? And some guy will guess 100, some guy will guess 2,000, and you'll get 24, 25, or 30 more people come in. That's generally about the number you need to get fairly correct. And you get the 30 people and you average them all out and you find out it's closer than any single one guess. And this happens so many times uh, that it's uh, kind of amazing. But uh, Francis Bacon, um, I think it's Francis Bacon, went to a uh, a uh, deal that was kind of like, I don't know, like a 4, uh, 4F kind of thing where they bring the prize bowls and all that stuff around. Uh, this is a circa... 1900 or something, uh, and he got all the data for them guessing the weight of a bull uh, and was just having fun with mathematics. Actually, he said, well, you know, I'm going to just average these uh, 800 uh, guesses, and whoever won the guess, got closest actually won the bull. Guess in 1900, you might have had somewhere to put it, and eh, today maybe not. Uh, but anyway, um, they found out that the average was closer, closest than, and closer than any of the uh, individual guesses. Uh, and he kind of went on from there to, to figure it out. But that's kind of the basis of the wisdom of crowds is asking a lot of different people what the answer is. And uh, instead of just taking the ETF and running uh, an indicator on a single uh, uh, amalgamation of something like an ETF, um, this is actually doing it for all the stocks inside. And we'll tell you why 
it is one of the rules for doing this if you want to do it yourself uh, that means that uh, these things and why they actually work better than the single ETF itself. The ETFs have some biases built in, and we'll talk about those biases in the webinar too. Uh, but there's some is issues why this becomes a much better signal than the ETF by itself. Uh, yeah, eh, I'll get into that. Okay, uh, let's take a look at a few more stocks. Again, you can get email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, let's see, we have somebody else. Uh, Microsoft, another 52-week high today. Where's that at? Right there. Take a quick look at that. Uh, again, no sign, no pullback. You know, you had a kind of a nice pullback out here. Uh, you had a test of the huge gap down of December uh, on December 4th with 38.5 million shares, but that's compared to 71 million shares high. And we started the continuation of the ABC higher. Um, Yet another 52-week high, kind of rolling over here on a lighter volume. And again, um, maybe a little pullback, uh, probably one that you would want to buy uh, if it comes back on lighter volume. But uh, eh, probably the most you're going to hope for, I think, through earnings on some of these is a consolidation. And a lot of them probably going to have little pullbacks. Maybe they'll go a little higher, but eh, kind of priced for perfection. I think the plays are probably, uh, at least the uh, good plays are probably after earnings. I'd probably, if I was long these things, take my cash, wait for earnings, and come back. OLED, the uh, big guys in organic LEDs are double topping. Uh, they did it, though, with some volume yesterday. This is OLED. is the symbol Cambridge display technology that makes organic LEDs. We talked about that on the show a couple weeks ago on how everybody wanted to buy them for Christmas uh, and why they're superior in some ways and not superior in others. Uh, but uh, you need 500,000 shares. Yesterday you had 2 million. Uh, you held that high. You're kind of holding it today, but not a lot of juice. Again, I'm thinking a lot of people are looking and waiting for earnings to uh, go to the next bridge so far. Uh, QQQs, of course, made another high. See if there's anything else out here. Some medical companies uh, kind of looking interesting. Uh, Stryker, um, to me, was kind of interesting. Yesterday, you needed 3 million shares or 3.2 million shares from the October 27th high. You broke through that yesterday with 1.2 million shares, and you get the reversal today. Now, this one is a little different than some of these uh, in this medical health care business. And that is that the energy off the December 7th low up to this high, not as much. And you could probably claim that that has a lot to do with, uh, the vacation days, uh, at the very, at the middle, uh, or end of December and us just really getting started now. So there may not be the same kind of momentum that we get with a couple of pullbacks and then a real move maybe later in the spring. But right now, um, starting to see a handful of these stocks uh, do this, which is pop higher. And of course, <clears throat> even Amazon uh, kind of, uh, you know, you're not making you feel warm and fuzzy out here. Not a lot more volume, no real big break uh, with uh, tremendous volume. In fact, when we busted the high in Amazon on November 27th, uh, 1.2 million shares with, uh, I don't know, what is that? Uh, yeah, 6.7 million shares. Um, you had about 4 million shares yesterday, today, 2.8 million shares. So am I predicting these things roll over and die? The answer is no. But I think a lot of these things probably going to come back into the trading range during earnings. And when everybody sees the coast is clear and you got another three months, these things could run again. Uh, Okay, what else do we have? Uh, we did at home, we did Boeing. Let's go down to the bottom of this list. Uh, Weight Watchers, of course, uh, uh, Walmart. Let's take a quick look at that because we haven't. Again, kind of a little dark cloud cover. Maybe we could get something before the end of the day. Just not feeling a huge pullback or a rush out here. Uh, but uh, if I was looking at Walmart, you broke 100 on this thing. 
Uh, and of course, once you get into 90, you're probably going to hit 100. That happens 85% of the time. So if you're in a stock long 90, a pretty good bet to hold on till it hits 100. Uh, now this hit 100 kind of coming back down a little bit today. Um, hasn't been a lot of juice in Walmart. Normally this is a weak season for retailers. Retailers haven't been the bell of the ball. Uh, could I see this come back to 95 bucks on light volume? I think you could. So you got seven bucks down in Walmart, pretty slow mover. This would be kind of an interesting to watch over the next couple of days. But I think we're just kind of tired. I don't think we're at the point where the market's going to blow up. But uh, looking for sideways, a little bit of a pullback in a lot of these stocks as we go through earnings here in the next few weeks. Be back in just a second. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. If you haven't tried David White's weekly investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, then this month is your perfect opportunity opportunity. On January 17th at 5 p.m., Dave will be hosting a special subscriber webinar where he'll be presenting on the newest feature in his newsletter, short-term sector charts that work on both the madness and wisdom of crowds. Join Dave on January 17th as he describes the method he uses to recognize these signals on a sector-by-sector -sector basis and as he discusses how he used this new tool to buy the gold miners in their seemingly darkest hour in December. And all new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. If you're a trader scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity, then now is a great time to sign up for the Technology Insider. For all the information and for details on Dave's subscriber event taking place January 17th, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under Trading Newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As I said, I don't think a lot of people are going to be uh, selling huge amounts of stock when there's going to be a tsunami of cash hitting our shores again but even the smhs which are fairly heavily weighted with that cash coming back uh have kind of gone to levels where we've seen pullbacks happen before now some of the times these pullbacks are not much and i'm kind of thinking that's what we're looking at but uh if you know you're long for the trade and you're thinking that you know you're happy with what you have don't want to give any back um you know we're pulling back a little bit here could we just go 
you know, for five days between 102 and 103 in the SMHs. I think you could. So the question is whether or not you want to sit on your hands and hope for more. My guess is that you're going to pull back a little bit and then head back up to these highs uh, in the SMHs. Uh, somewhere around that 105 and a half area looks like the next target. Uh, but you know, it may take a week sitting on the sidelines. And if you have a stock that maybe had a lot of cash come into it over the last few or four or five days, maybe you want to take your cash, try to uh, get a faster horse on the next little pullback. Uh, but uh, this is kind of what this thing is going to tell you. It's going to tell you everybody uh, in that sector is above its nine day moving average and that things are about as rosy as they get historically. Uh, with some stocks being up and some stocks being down. But uh, thanks to, uh, or that was for Jim that uh, emailed in, as you can always do at path at tfnn.com. So uh, we'll be uh, kind of sprinkling these things out over the next week. Of course, if you get my newsletter, uh, you can have uh, uh, get it with a money back guarantee. We're going to have that webinar uh, a week from tomorrow night, and we're going to show all of them. And uh, I'm going to provide a lot of history of these things back in several years so you can see how they act, get up to speed on them. But uh, we'll talk about why to buy and why to sell, a lot of other stuff, a lot of uh, secrets that I stumbled upon while I was creating these and make them work. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we will see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.